Hello everybody and welcome back to another At The Crossing Productions video. Today is a little different. Uh, we're going to be doing a Run 8 tutorial uh, for version 3. Um, and I am going to be showing you guys how I make uh, train horn mods for Run 8. Um, I started getting into this uh, recently. I've taken pretty good skill at it. So I wanted to share my technique um, and hopefully uh, some more people get some use out of that. Um, so today we are going to be making a, uh, a raised letter K5LA off of an SD70AH-T4 that I recorded a clip of in Napa Vine. Um, and this is the clip that we are going to be using today uh, as our base. And it sounds like this. <laughs> So we are going to be putting this horn into Run 8. Um, I'm going to be using Audacity, um, and we are going to get started. All right, so first things first, uh, you're going to want to take your uh, video clip of whatever horn clip you're going to be using, and um, using you know one of the various websites online, you're going to want to convert your video, either an MP4 file or a YouTube video, uh, to an MP3 file so that you can open it in an audio manipulation program like Audacity. Um, once you've done that, uh, you are going to import your audio file, um, and this one shows up like this. So the first thing that I do, um, is I select uh, the entire audio file, I go to Tracks, Mix, and I mix stereo down to mono. Um, and this will essentially preserve the sound um, while also making it into a mono file instead of a stereo file. Um, I'm not sure if this has been fixed, uh, but previously uh, stereo files in train simulators uh, do not have a working Doppler effect. Uh, so mixing it down to a mono file uh, means that you'll you will get the the Doppler effect in the game uh, properly. So now that we've mixed the stereo file down to a mono track, um, we are going to isolate. Uh, the the horn portion of the clip um, as to not be any extra space. So we are going to cut out the beginning and we are going to cut out the end but give ourselves some space um, after the horn ends uh, so that we can properly fade out the end clip of the horn. So on Run 8 version 3, uh, the way that horns work is that the first second or so is the start portion of the horn, and then um, the last second of the clip is the end portion. And uh, clips have to be exactly 10 seconds long, and the, between the 9th and the 10th second is when the end of the horn is supposed to be. Now this clip is obviously not 10 seconds long. The horn itself is a little over three and a half seconds long. So what we are going to need to do is we're going to need to isolate uh, the portion of the clip where the horn is constantly sounding. And we are going to loop that until we have enough uh, sound to fill the entire of the audio clip. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to select this portion, and it sounds like this. And we are going to split this clip so that it becomes its own clip. And we are going to move the ending of the clip down to the ninth second mark, just about. Now we are going to add another track, a mono track, and we are going to copy our looping uh, full blast sound and we are going to put it down onto the other track. 
Now the reason that we are doing this is so that we can crossfade these two clips in order to create a smooth um, transition and a loop that doesn't clip or has any sort of obvious uh, looping. So we are going to take these two clips and we are going to fade out on this clip and we're going to fade in on this clip and then we are going to reverse the bottom clip and we are going to fade in again. This means that the fade out and fade in on both sides of this clip will be the same length um, and therefore you won't have to worry about some of the jank that might occur if uh, the fades don't line up properly. Now that being said, um, even though these are the same lengths um, and fade should fade properly, um, they they tend to not properly line up just yet. So if I play this clip right now, you'll kind of hear it um, when it when it uh, transitions. <laughs> There's a little dip um, in the uh, in the sound. So what we're going to do is we are going to adjust this as necessary to the point where we have a seamless loop here, like so. So we're going to copy this again, and because it, this is too close, we are going to move this down. We're going to copy this again. and we are going to paste it up here and we are going to reverse it again so it is facing the correct direction and we're going to line it up as we see fit and we are going to keep it there now for the ending the ending occurs at between the ninth and the tenth second what we are going to do here is we are going to fade between the blast of the horn and the ending echo. So this will create a seamless transition from the loop to the end uh, without any clipping or anything. Um, and it'll, it'll give it a naturally sounding fade out. Um, and of course this has to be adjusted as necessary. Um, but it should come out relatively smooth. Like so. So we are going to adjust the sound clip, um, and as you'll hear, the end of the sound clip has a little bit of background noise. So we are going to cut it a little bit here. And we are going to fade out on this clip so that way the background noise won't come through. And then in order to meet the 10 second threshold, we are going to select the space and we are going to generate silence so that it meets the 10 second, 10 second mark. Now this isn't a perfect echo. It uh, kind of sounds a little shallow. Um, and this just depends uh, between clips. Um, some clips have better endings and not so much background noise. Um, but for the purposes of this video, uh, this is fine. So the ending completely sounds like this. So now that we've got the ending and the looping sorted out, we are going to work a little bit on the front part of the horn. So currently we have not done any work, uh, so it should just cut in and it'll sound a little bit jank. So what we are going to do is we're just going to select this first part and we are going to fade in and this will give it a less cut sound and it should be a little bit more natural sounding. And 
and if there's any extra sound in this little bit you can just repeat that fade in a couple of times and it should do just fine so now that we have our clip um, and we've mostly sorted out all of the looping and fading details uh, we are going to want to select all we're going to go to effect volume and compression and we're going to amplify uh, as loud as loud as it will let us without uh, clipping the audio and this will it does this automatically so the maximum decibels that we can increase this without clipping the audio is a uh, 1.347 decibels so we're going to hit apply and then we'll make it as loud as possible without uh, clipping the audio um, and we are going to want to export this and export it as a WAV file so that the game will read the uh, the audio file so we are going to title this k5la underscore up and then I am I usually name these after the specific numbers this one is 3012 and we are going to save that and then what you're going to want to do from that point is you're going to want to open your run8 file go to run8 simulator v3 content v3 rail vehicles sounds horns and then you are going to want to place your horn in this folder here um, and we are going to do that real quick here and this will automatically put it into the run8 horn list uh, so that you can apply it to a locomotive now I'm going to boot up run8 here in a second and we're going to test out our new horn alright and now we're loaded into run8 and I've loaded up a train uh, for this demonstration now what we're going to want to do in Run8 in order to apply our horn, if you don't know, is uh, we are going to open the horn menu by pressing Control F3. Now this is our locomotive that we have highlighted, and we are going to switch the horn from whatever horn you have, and we are going to find our horn. So we are looking for K5LA underscore UP3012. Um, and you will just look for whatever your horn is called and it's in alphabetical order so we're going to select this horn um, and we are going to see what it sounds like on our locomotive so this is what the horn sounds like on our locomotive um, in this case I have it on the UP SD70 Ace as there is not a tier 4 ace model in run 8 um, but now we have our custom horn uh, functional on our locomotive um, so I hope that you guys uh, were informed by this um, and uh, if you have any uh, questions feel free to comment below and I can clarify some on th some things if I missed any um, but overall, this is a pretty standard procedure of how I make my train horns uh, for Run 8. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, take care.